Hey guys, Josh for the Adept Ape channel here, and today we're going to be discussing engine idling and if it's really bad for your engine. Before we do that though, I have a question for you. Is your engine running? Well, you better go catch it! I know, not that funny. But idling is actually a serious issue to discuss because Many diesel engines are idled for long periods of time, whether they are running a PTO, uh, waiting for a trailer to get filled or emptied, or some guys sleep in their truck with AC on and the engine running the whole time. And we need to discuss why this can be bad for your engine, when it's really bad, when it's not really bad, and what you can do to prevent some of the damage that this can cause. Okay? So before we get into the meat of this video, I'd like to thank everyone that has donated to the Adept Ape channel at adeptape at yahoo.com on PayPal, and on to the video. So is it just a rumor that you shouldn't let your engine idle, or is it actually a manufacturer's recommendation that your engine shouldn't be idled very often? Well, straight out of a cat owner and operation manual, we have this sentence, avoid excess idling. If the vehicle is parked for more than five minutes, stop the engine. Excessive idling can cause carbon buildup, and excessive idling can also cause the engine to slobber. This is harmful to the engine. If extended idle time is required, control the engine RPM to 1000 RPMs or higher. Ensure that the coolant temperature is in excess of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Consult your cat dealer for assistance. Also, in the severe use fluid recommendation. So if your engine is considered severe duty, there's a couple of guidelines that will make the engine considered severe duty, which will limit the amount of miles you get between oil changes, which will limit the amount of time between coolant flushes. Basically your engine's being worked harder than a normal use engine. Here's some of the conditions. Frequent operation in dusty conditions or off-highway conditions. High load factor operation, meaning like a heavy haul. Frequent high altitude operation. Frequent operation at low idle in excess of 20% of engine runtime in idle. Frequent cold starts at temperatures below zero degrees. You get it. There's about 50 different ones that can mean it's a severe duty. What you're looking at here is a destroyed cylinder and piston. And obviously the pistons damage and there are vertical grooves in the cylinder wall, neither which are caused from long idle times. But if you look at the cylinder wall, you can see a reflection of the piston. This is called glazing, where a mirror-like finish is put upon the cylinder wall and this increases blow by and oil consumption, most likely caused by long idle times. So it's obvious the manufacturers do not want you idling your engines for a long amount of time. But why did I decide to make this video? Well, the reason is, is a customer had purchased a C7 truck, I believe it was a dump truck, and it had fairly low miles on it, around 70,000 miles. And the customer complained of high blow-by, very high blow-by. And for an engine with such low mileage, maybe he, he thought there was probably something wrong with the engine mechanically. And there was, but nothing had actually failed. It turns out this engine had been ran almost 80% of the time at idle, and even though it had 70,000 miles, which would normally mean a much longer runtime for that engine, it was shot. The blow-by numbers were about five times what they should have been, which means this engine would need new cylinders installed or a new block, basically, for a C7 because they don't have liners. And this is somewhat common on engines that are idled often. And let's discuss why. So let's discuss why idling an engine, particularly a diesel engine, will accelerate wear. I've been told that running your diesel engine at idle increases the wear rate by 60% compared to normal operation of a mediumly loaded engine. And why is this? Well, there's several things happening. Your cylinders are designed to be hot. They like to be hot. The coolant, it should be hot. This is when the engine is most efficient. Also, it's when the most amount of fuel will burn efficiently in the cylinder. 
So if you're idling excessively, what's happening is you're getting a large amount of carbon buildup around your piston rings. It will be pushed into the turbo, so you'll be getting you'll be getting carbon buildup on your piston rings. You'll be getting carbon buildup on your veins in your turbocharger. If you have a DPF, it will be plugging your DPF faster. All of these things are bad. Also, unburned fuel can contribute to washing away oil that is supposed to be lubricating your piston rings on the sides of your cylinders, and you do not want that. That will wipe out the crosshatch on your cylinders. Now, the worst time to idle an engine is directly after a rebuild. And why is that? Well, lucky for you at Adept Ape Studios, we have a piston. Now, this is a 32.8 piston. Most cat engines now run three piston rings. So you have uh, an upper or middle ring and then your oil control ring. 32.8 is an older engine, so it has one piston ring, one oil control ring. When you have a new engine, you have finely cross-hatched lines that are basically machined into the cylinder wall. And when you run the engine, the piston rings are breaking in against the cylinder wall because they're wearing against it. And if you do not load the cylinders, what happens is the piston rings do not expand like they should. Downward pressure from combustion, especially high combustion pressures, which would be heavy loaded situations, helps seat the rings against the sides of the cylinder walls. If this does not happen properly, say you run with no load for the first 100 hours outside of a rebuild, or whoever rebuilds the engine lets the engine idle for several hours, um, this can accelerate wear very quickly. You could have high blow-by numbers within 100,000 miles on an engine that should last perhaps a million miles because the piston rings are never properly seated. And when they're seated, that helps prevent glazing. And let's talk a little bit about glazing. So what is glazing? Glazing is a mirror-like finish that can develop on the sides of your cylinder wall, particularly after a rebuild, but also it can occur later in the life of the engine due to excessive idling in low load conditions. Also, improper use of lubricants or extended intervals on oil changes can help glazing form on the sides of cylinder walls. And this is a bad thing. If you pull your cylinder head and there's a mere finish on your cylinder walls, you probably had lots of blow-by and oil consumption. And the reason for that is those little crosshatch lines that kind of roughen up the surface on the cylinder wall, that actually helps oil and the piston ring seal against the cylinder wall. When it's a mirror-like finish, there's nowhere for the oil to stick to and there's nowhere for the piston rings to grab against really to seal them during the combustion process. That's why your blow-by will increase. And there is no way to fix glazing outside of taking the head off and either installing new liners or deglazing it with a ball hone or machining new sleeves into it. And I've heard people, oh, maybe you can dump something into the cylinder or into the intake that would break up the glazing. Well, no, because a crosshatch doesn't go vertical in the cylinder. It's at an angle, usually about 22, 25, 30 degrees. And if you dump an abrasive into the cylinder, what's it going to do? Well, the piston goes straight up and down. It doesn't go on a diagonal angle. So you'll actually be just wearing grooves into the glazing vertically, which will just make your blow-by worse. And that's the last thing you want is more blow-by because blow-by, you can start pushing out seals, um, lots of oil consumption, lots of oil leaking out of the blow-by tube. It, it's a bad situation. It only gets worse. Um, there's really nothing to do about it. Um, and that's why you don't want to idle for very long. So we had a guy in the shop this week. He had a Cat C15. It had over a million miles on it. The head had never been removed. It didn't have a lot of blow-by. And why is this? Well, he says he hardly ever idles the thing. He has a small APU, an auxiliary generator that he runs at night, and he pretty much never lets the engine idle. So it will run a considerably long time. 
you know, he doesn't have oil consumption issues. He doesn't have high blow-by. That's because that engine is being operated mostly in that temperature range that it's supposed to be operated in, and it's in the load that it likes to be operated in. So what can you do if you don't have an APU? Well, obviously you could add one, but they're very expensive. This would be an auxiliary power unit, some sort of generator that would help if you are parked and you want AC or heat without idling your engine. Now, as Kat had mentioned before in the owner's manual, if you do have to idle it, do it at a higher RPM. Most PTOs when they're operated are 12, 1400 RPM operation. Because even though the engine's really not under much of a load, if you can increase your RPMs up to 12, 14, maybe 1,000 RPMs, you're increasing the load on those cylinders. You're also going to be generating more heat, so you'll have higher temperatures in the cylinders. It should decrease the damage that long-term runtime of a low-loaded engine would have. So just go by Kat's recommendation. So I hope this video has been helpful describing the effects of idling and why it can hurt your engine, particularly a diesel engine. Okay, thanks for watching.